Merry Christmas, fudgies, and welcome back to an extra special episode of Bunches of Lunches. This week, we're celebrating Christmas around the world. I cannot tell you how much I love learning about the foods and holiday traditions from other countries, but I probably love it just as much as I love making fun lunches. So that's why I'm super excited to be combining the two this week. But before we get started, don't forget to hit the red subscribe button if you haven't already, and go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up if you'd like to see more international lunches in the future. Oh yes, and just so you guys know, we've actually been on Christmas break this week, so none of these lunches actually had to go to school, the kids just ate them at home. And I did a lot of research planning out these lunches, but I'm no expert and I can only use the ingredients available to me. For some of these lunches, I cooked items from scratch, other times I took help from the store, and sometimes I had to find the closest substitution available. And now, without further ado, well, let's get started. Okay friends, the first country we're visiting this week is Germany. Germany in December is famous for their Christmas markets. They are all over the place. So all of the foods I've chosen for this lunch are traditionally found at Christmas markets throughout Germany. So I'm gonna start by preparing some Bratwurst. Now I actually found these at Trader Joe's. I'm not sure if they're super authentic, but it's the best I can find in my area. To go along with these, I'm trying out a new recipe for red cabbage. Now we have never tried this before. I think it's kind of like sauerkraut, but with purple cabbage and apples. And after about 30 minutes on the stove top, it looks like this. But I have to say the vinegar smell is pretty strong. Hopefully the kids will like it. While the cabbage was cooking, I also prepared some German potato pancakes. Now I've been told these are very popular at Christmas markets. And depending on where you're from in Germany, you might call them Kartoffelpuffer. Or they might be called Reibekuchen, which are both really hard for me to say. Now before I add these to the lunch boxes, I will add some authentic German mustard to just Lily's. I don't think any of the other kids will want to try it. They don't really care for mustard. I've tried this German mustard and I think it's really good. And I don't think it's too spicy. In this small container, I'm going to add a little bit of the red cabbage. Like I said, I'm not sure if the kids will like it, but I wanted to give them just a little bit so they can at least try it. And in the other compartment, I'm gonna add some authentic German pickles. So I'll go ahead and give the kids each one pickle, but for Lily, I'll go ahead and put two because usually she loves pickles. In this separate container, I went ahead and added one potato pancake per child, and I decided to give them some applesauce to go with it because I think they'll really like that. And then for dessert, I have a very special German cookie. These are called Lebkuchen. Now these cookies have a cake-like texture, and they typically come frosted. These ones have chocolate on them. And I'd say it's kind of like gingerbread. They have spices and honey, and these ones contain nuts as well. And there you have it, a German Christmas market inspired lunch. Lunch is over now, and here's what we eat. Or didn't eat. Overall, I think they did really well. I did end up cutting the little sausages in half because it was kind of big for just one kid. Okay, Jackson, tell me what your favorite thing was and what your least favorite thing was. My favorite thing was the applesauce mm -hmm. and just the sauces, like not the bun. And my least favorite part, this, this, and the cookie. <laughs> What about you, Lily? What was your favorite part? What was something you didn't really like? Um, I don't really like these kind of The cabbage, yeah. <laughs> but what part was your favorite? I think I know. The pickles are my favorite. Yep, she ate the two that I gave her, and then she ate two more. And I'd have to say that those pickles were a little bit on the sweet side, so I was surprised that she liked them, but she did. What about you, Mackenzie? Hmm. What was your favorite part? I really like the potato pancakes. Yeah, she was the only kid who ate all of hers. And she did pretty good on her sandwich. It was pretty big. See you tomorrow. Cheers. This next Christmas lunch was inspired by Japan. Now, I've personally spent two Christmases in Japan, and it's quite different than it is in the U.S. So that means they definitely don't prepare the traditional big Christmas feast like we do but I think what they do eat might surprise you. At a Japanese Christmas party, you're probably gonna find some kind of sushi or fish, and so I picked up this tray from my local grocery store. I'm going to offer this to the kids. I don't know if they'll like it, 
but if they don't, I know my husband will, so it's all good. And of course, it wouldn't be a Japanese Christmas without Kentucky Fried Chicken. A popular slogan in Japan is Kurisumasu ni wa Kentucky. Now this Japanese tradition is only about 40 years old, but if you want to get KFC on Christmas Day, you can't just walk up and order it in Japan. You usually have to order your KFC weeks in advance. Luckily for us, I just went through the drive-thru and here it is. So along with the KFC, I also gave the kids some corn that came with the meal. I also added some edamame and a Japanese style Satsuma orange. And last but not least, I couldn't forget the Japanese Christmas cake. Definitely one of my favorite traditions. These are traditionally eaten on Christmas Eve. It's basically a sponge cake filled with whipped cream. It often has strawberries or fresh fruit on it. And it almost always has a cute little Santa decoration on top. So I'm just gonna give the kids each one little slice to go with their lunch. And there you have it, a Japanese inspired Christmas lunch. Itadakimasu. Okay guys, lunchtime is over and I've got Mackenzie here to tell us how it went. And by the way, she was the only brave one to actually try the sushi. What'd you think? It wasn't my favorite, but I'm glad I tried it. Yeah, you should at least try everything once. That's what I say. But Kenzie, what was your favorite? The cake. The cake, yeah, the cake was definitely good. I think all the kids did pretty well, but Jackson, you did really, really good. What'd you think? Uh, I really liked it. What was your favorite part? Um, the cake. The cake? <laughs> what was your least favorite? Ah, uh, sushi. Now, Miss Lily did not end up eating her chicken at all. I put it back in the fridge and we saved it for later. I'm not a fan of chicken on the bone. I'd rather have like a chicken strip instead. Well, what part did you like? Um, the cake and the orange. <laughs> yeah. John A. See you tomorrow. Our next lunch is inspired by Mexico. Let me know in the comments down below if you've ever been to Mexico or if you're from Mexico. Now we actually live pretty close to an authentic Mexican market. So I was able to pick up a lot of things for this lunch there. But I'm gonna start off this lunch by making a really special salad. This is called Ensalada de Nochebuena. And each family kind of makes it their own way. But usually this salad is a combination of fruits and vegetables. Some recipes might have apples or oranges. Lots of recipes will have jicama. And just like that, the salad is ready. It's such an interesting combination. When I was at the Mexican market, I also picked up this jar of ponche, which is basically a hot fruit punch. This traditional drink is very popular around Christmas and it's made with lots of different fruits, sugar cane, and cinnamon. So in this jar is actually the concentrated drink. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump it into my pot, add a liter of water and some sugar, and I'm gonna let this simmer for 30 minutes. So while this is simmering away, I'll go ahead and prepare the rest of today's lunch. And that means heating up some delicious soup. This soup is called pozole. This soup has hominy. It can also have beef or pork. This one is pork. It has lots of seasoning in there, but it's not too spicy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add these to the thermoses. To go along with that, another Christmas time favorite, some chicken tamales. So in this next compartment, I'll go ahead and add our salad. And then to go along with that, a really special snack. These are bunuelos. Now these are a crispy fried treat. They sprinkle cinnamon and sugar on there. And then last but not least, something I've always wanted to try. This is a rosca de reyes, which basically means ring of the kings. Now technically, this is traditionally served in January to celebrate the epiphany. But since it was available at the store, I thought we could try it anyway. Our ponche is ready, but it's still really hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it cool down. And I've read that it's traditional to serve it with a cinnamon stick. And I have to say, it smells really good. Okay, Jackson, what'd you think of today's lunch? I really liked it. What was your favorite part? Um, I think the tor uh... Tamale? Uh-huh. That was really good. Now these three kids ended up sharing just one because they were huge. But what do you think of the soup? It was okay. But not your favorite? 
snow. It was my favorite. I'd say out of everything, that the soup was definitely my favorite. Lily, what was your favorite? Um, the little pieces of cinnamon on it, those. Oh yeah, those were tasty. Did it taste like a churro? Yeah. Kind of, like a tortilla churro? Mm -hmm. Oh yes, and I did end up giving these kids like a dollop of sour cream for their tamale. I don't know if that's traditional, but they asked for it and they liked it. What did you think, Kenzie? It was cool. What was your favorite? The tamale. Did you like it better with sour cream? Yeah. What about the soup? I didn't eat it. And you guys, we found baby Jesus in our bread. In fact, I found him when I was cutting it, <laughs> when I was cutting it in pieces. So there he is. Cute little one. There's still one left in the bread somewhere. And I'm gonna find it. You're gonna find it tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hasta mañana. These next lunches were inspired by the countries in the UK. So for this lunch, I'm gonna start by making some pigs in a blanket, but I'm gonna make the UK version. In America, when we say pigs in a blanket, it's usually a sausage or a hot dog with bread dough wrapped around it. But in the UK, it's a sausage or a chipolata with streaky bacon wrapped around it. So once I've wrapped the bacon around, I'm also gonna add a toothpick just to keep the bacon on the little sausage. Then I'm gonna sprinkle a tiny bit of brown sugar on there and get them into the oven. While those are in the oven, I'm gonna start on another Christmas favorite, which is a Yorkshire pudding. Now in America, when we say pudding, we probably think of like jello pudding, but a Yorkshire pudding is more like a bread that you serve with dinner. They're actually pretty easy to make but I don't have the special kind of pan so mine just turned out so-so. Next I'm gonna add a few slices of roasted turkey. I actually got this pre-cooked at Costco. Now just like America, turkey is very popular on Christmas and is usually the main course. And to go along with this I've added some cranberry sauce. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my Yorkshire pudding which I'm going to add just a little bit of gravy to. I've heard that's very traditional. And then in this other section, I'm gonna add just a few of our little pigs in a blanket. For our vegetable today, I just roasted up some carrots. And for the dessert, I picked up some of these pre-made mince pies. These little pies have fruit and nuts, spices and orange peel. And since these ones are walkers, they have like a shortbread crust on top. These are actually a product of Scotland. And I just love them because they remind me of Harry Potter. These are so cute. They come in a little tin and the box says that you could heat them up or just serve them room temperature. So that's what I'm gonna do. And last but not least, I have a special drink for us all to try. Now some people pronounce this wassail, some people pronounce it wassail, but it's basically a spiced holiday drink. I'm not sure if the kids will like it. I'm not even sure if I will like it, but we can at least give it a try. Lunch is over now and here's what we ate. Not too bad. The kids were pretty adventurous. They did at least try everything. Mackenzie, what was your favorite? My favorite was the pigs in a blanket. Pigs in a blanket, yeah. I definitely like the UK's version of pigs in a blanket better. Now I do have to mention that we all tried this uh, wassail drink and pretty much no one liked it. I didn't even like it. It was kind of spicy. Now I think I know what Lily's favorite was, but why don't you tell us anyway? Pigs in a blanket. That was your favorite? Yeah. Next time I'll definitely make a bigger batch of these pigs in a blanket. They would be perfect for a big party. And what about you, Jack? He did not want to try his mince pie at all. That's okay. We can save it for later. What was your favorite? Um, the pigs in a blanket. You too. Everyone liked that the most. Next up, we have lunches inspired by Canada. I'm gonna start by making a very famous French Canadian Christmas time dish called a tortière. So this is a meat pie, traditionally made with pork or beef, I'm doing a combination of both. This also has onions and garlic, mashed potatoes, and then you bake this into a pie. Now I'm taking a lot of help from a store here and I'm using a store-bought pie crust, which I'm totally cool with. Pie making is not my specialty at all. I'm gonna try to make this as pretty as I can. I'm gonna brush some egg wash on the top and then get it into the oven. Now I actually made this one the night before because I've been told that it's best the day after, served with lots of ketchup. So I'm just gonna give the kids one little slice with ketchup, and then to go along with that, I'm also gonna give them some Brussels sprouts. 
I'm gonna put a poll right up here for you guys to let me know if you like Brussels sprouts or if you don't like Brussels sprouts because I know it can go either way. Let me know. Next, I'm adding another food that's popular in Canada and that's popular other places too, and that's a pierogi. Next up, I'm adding a very special dessert that I actually made the day before, and that is a Nanaimo bar. Now, I have to admit, I had never heard of these before I met my husband. It is a family tradition of his that they would make these every Christmas. So basically, this is a no-bake dessert, and it's named after this city called Nanaimo in British Columbia. It's a combination of graham crackers, cocoa powder, coconut, walnuts, pudding, and chocolate chips. This dessert is not hard to make, but it's definitely time consuming because you have to make three different layers. And then just for fun, I'm gonna throw in some apples just because I feel like the kids need some kind of fruit to go with this lunch. And there you have it. Okay guys, lunchtime is over and I have to say that those pieces of tortilla were really big and so Kenzie has some left over and Lily ended up sharing with Griffin and with me. They were super filling, but right now I have Jackson with me. And what did you think? What was your favorite part? Um, I like the brownie things. The Nanaimo bars? Uh -huh. Yeah. Anything else? I do have to say that I like this a lot better with ketchup. I heard I had heard that you could have it with ketchup or with applesauce, and I went with the ketchup. I thought it was really good. Well, what did you think, Lily? What was your favorite? What was that chocolate called again? Nanaimo. <laughs> Apparently, that's a city in Canada, Nanaimo. You like that the best? Yeah. Me too. But I do have to say that my crust fell apart a little bit, so I might make it differently next time. But what did you think, Mackenzie? I really like the pierogi. Pierogi? Uh -huh. Yeah. But what about the Brussels sprouts? Okay, kids, out of all of these lunches this week, which one was your favorite? Uh, I like the Japanese one. The Japanese lunch? What about you, Kenzie? I like the Japanese one, too. Um, my favorite's Canada. From Canada? Yeah. See you See next week! week. Let me know in the comments down below out of all the lunches this week, which one was your favorite? Also, let me know if you found our special Christmas Luna. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.